Hi everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about how to make a whole chicken Instapot soup. Um, it came out amazing last time I did it, so hopefully I'll have as much luck this time. Um, when I start making a recipe, I like to look at Pinterest, and uh, I like the pretty pictures, and um, whatever rises to the top tends to be a good recipe. So I found this really nice, good-looking recipe here, and um, there was only a few choices, so it was easy, and then you just uh, click on visit. And uh, with these Pinterest things, they blah, 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 they talk and talk and talk about the recipe and then finally at the very end is where you're going to get the actual recipe so don't get discouraged they're all like that and uh, just uh, go ahead and scroll to the bottom and close off some of the advertisements and things like that and you'll finally find a real recipe and so I, I look at recipes and see if I have most of the ingredients and then I figure out whether I'm going to follow it exact, which I rarely ever do, my husband can attest, or if I'm going to change a few things up. And uh, with the soup, mostly I'm definitely going to saute vegetables. I'm not going to just throw them in raw into any kind of broth. I'm always going to be sauteing. So I like to use the saute um, feature on the Instapot. And this is, we've got it on saute here in the front this little button here and you can push that to go to more which is a high and then if it gets too hot you go down to less and usually I just start at normal put in a little bit of oil and then that's when we um, go ahead and use our onions so you can see there we go so it calls for two large onions so I got those all chopped up Stir those up a little bit. And really get them nice and brown. So I like to do it till maybe it's translucent. I'm not sure I'm going to go that far with it, but uh, I'm going to do those first. I might pop it up to a little bit higher so we get these done a little quicker. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to make sure I have all my other ingredients because things tend to go kind of fast. Um, I've got my celery here that we've already prepped. Mark helped out. I've got my carrots here, and I've got some uh, ginger that I pre-process and then freeze, and some garlic that I also pre-process. I buy organic fresh and throw it through a blender or a Cuisinart, and then I stick it in the freezer, and that handles really well. Okay, uh, it's getting quite aromatic now. I've got it on high, so I really gotta watch it. But it's cooking a little faster now. And I was able to find some basil from the garden. So we'll be all set there. So I'm gonna let this just stir this occasionally so it gets kind of cooked down because this is where you get your flavors using something. If you don't saute your vegetables, your soup will not have nearly the flavor. And my other trick is I like to use um, a smoked hickory sea salt. And uh, I picked that up online and uh, it's quite expensive. You can find it at local natural food stores, but um, I think I paid 10 bucks for two pounds of it or something. And it makes everything delicious. So it's a little brown and it's a really tasty salt. So while that's cooking, I'm going to prepare my whole bird. I'm going to rinse it really, really well. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to dry it. You dry it if you're going to roast it, but uh, in a soup it probably doesn't matter. So, but I am going to go ahead and prepare my chicken now. So this is getting a little hot, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the saute down to uh, low for just a moment. See how it's getting a little brown. I was busy with the chicken. I don't really like that. Sorry, not able to see here. Whew. It's getting a little brown down there. and uh, I don't like to see that, but it's beginning of burning. Turn it down a little. Best you keep it moving. Don't get too distracted like I did. Okay, that's starting to look really good. I'm going to put it back up to saute normal. I 
almost translucent enough to add my garlic and ginger. Recipe calls for garlic, but I always like to add ginger because it's such a nice pairing to garlic and it gives a lot of punch of flavor, an unexpected kind of flavor that most people really like. So now that I'm turned it down a little, I'm able to get up that little bit of a brown burn there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna throw a little white wine in there to pull up a little bit of that brown. Just a touch of white wine. Now, of course, all the alcohol will be burned off, so there's no worry about that. And it cleans the bottom of the pan really nicely. Looks like I never made a mistake. So here we go. Nice and translucent. Throw in my ginger. Throw in my garlic. So that's my sauteed beefing. It goes off, off after some amount of minutes. So you just hit it again. It looks like 10 minutes we get, so. Stir this in. And I like to put in a little bit of my spices now. So a little bit of ground, fresh ground pepper. And chicken soup doesn't get a lot of spice besides salt and pepper, really. The garlic gives it the flavor. And the other trick I do is um, when it calls for chicken broth, I substitute bone broth. So what I'm going to do today is do one chicken and one bone. And that gives it a, a much healthier base. The bone broth has all the health of the bones being slow cooked over a long period of time. And then chicken broth is just your classic taste there. And of course, um, my other secret weapon is this hickory smoked salt, and I'm going to throw that in to taste as well. So at this stage, you got to kind of keep a good eye on it. And I'm actually going to now turn the saute off, uh, cancel, because I'm still working on my chicken over here and uh, I got to get it ready because it's going to be close to the next thing going in. But I like to cut off all the extra fat around here and uh, around the butt so that the chicken doesn't, the soup doesn't get too fatty. I don't like when the fat rises to the top like that. So, okay, so I'm going to turn this back on back to our saute and I'm going to throw in now uh, my carrots and then my celery will go in in a moment so a lot of carrots we love carrots love the soup to be full of veggies as full as we can do so I want to saute those in so that the carrots get a nice flavor before all the broth comes because they still will maintain that flavor if you coated them first. So we've got this on saute. A few more carrots. I always push it to the edge and fill it up as much as I can. Okay, while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean and chop up some of this fresh basil from my garden. And uh, I'm going to add that to the soup. Should give it a really nice flavor. I don't want to walk away too long, but it's not as dangerous with the carrots in it as just the onions alone. So I think I'm going to pop it up. Again, I'm going to pop it up a little bit higher where we go to more, which is like high. Because I'm on a time crunch here. Got to go to work. <laughs> While this cooks, I'm going to run down to my garden and get a little rosemary too, even though the recipe doesn't call for it. Because rosemary is a good pairing with chicken. And that's how I do my recipes. I just think about what I know is a good pairing. And I stick to those things. Um, it's calling for some tarragon and parsley. I don't have those things. So... I'm going to go ahead and go with a rosemary. 
Okay, it's starting to really smell great. And the carrots are getting a little bit soft. So in a moment, I'm gonna add the celery and I found some beautiful rosemary in my garden. Gonna just rin rinse that, take off the needles and chop those up. Okay, here's my rosemary. I think that might just do it. Rosemary is quite a strong herb, so we don't need a ton of it. And now it's time for the celery. A lot of celery. As you can see, I measure everything exactly. So I'm just going to stir that a little bit longer so that the celery is sure to pick up the flavors. I'm going to add, um, this is the basil, fresh basil. I'm going to add it to the soup. Um, it's a sort of a delicate fresh herb, so uh, I may add some fresh again when I serve it or just as I heat it up because now that it's in the soup, it's going to be really cooked well. And um, light herbs like that, um, are nice if they're not cooked so well, but uh, if you want to portion it out and do half half a portion in it in the soup now to give everything a nice flavor, and then some at the end as well. I would chop it finer when I would be serving it close to, when I would be adding it closer to serving. This time I kind of made it chunky because it's going to be all cooked into the soup. So how this soup goes is um, we're going to stick the whole chicken on top here in a moment and uh, fill it to the maximum. Don't go beyond the maximum level with my bone broth and chicken broth. And um, we'll cook it for 25 minutes and let it, uh, you can either quick release after 10 minutes or just let it naturally release after 30 minutes. And then you pop it off and then you shred the chicken off the bone. and. Um, what I like to do is blend half of it to make it creamy without adding cream. So uh, the whole chicken's going to go in to give the, everything flavor, and then we're going to pull all the chicken off and get the carcass out, and then our soup will be done. And as I say, I like to put half of it in a blender. It creates a beautiful creamy soup without cream. So particularly when I make soups, I like to look through my uh, refrigerator and see if I find anything interesting I can throw in. And here I have some uh, bacon ends. They um, were really cheap at the natural food store because they're ends and there's a lot of fat in them, but they also are full of flavor. So I think this might add a nice little flavor to my soup just by throwing in a few um, bacon ends. And I found those at my local Whole Foods Deli. It was $9 a pound for organic bacon ends and uh, I think they're really going to give some pizzazz a flavor. So that's what I like to do is just look around and see if anything inspires me. And I remembered these bacon ends. Okay, now I'm off to get my whole chicken because everything's ready now. See, it has all gotten flavor, the flavor of the saute. You must do that to make a tasty soup in my opinion. Okay, looks real good. Looks ready for our whole chicken. So there we go. As you can see, it gets quite full. So now I want to cover it with broth. And um, I'm going to start with the bone broth because that's the more important one. And I may just not have enough room to add the two cartons I have here because I added so many vegetables. I like to make my own bone broth. And I do that in the Instapot and uh, it's two carcasses. I prefer them to be organic chickens because you're boiling down carcasses. And uh, what I'm doing now is looking for the maximum level so we don't go above it, it's right there. So you just do two carcasses of whole chickens and throw in um, maybe a half an onion and a carrot or so and maybe, maybe some herbs if you like. And uh, I like to add a little um, um, fish sauce and a little apple cider vinegar which draws more of the bone goodness out of it. I find that recipe on Pinterest. It's under Nom Nom Paleo Bone Broth and uh, I cook it for four hours. You can do it as little as 20 minutes 
but I cook mine for four hours because it doesn't matter and the longer you cook it the better it gets. So I was right, it only took one carton and so since I chose my bone, bone broth I'm glad this is a healing soup for a friend. And uh, that's it guys, so what we're going to do now is just seal it up and set it for 20 minutes and uh, I will clean the chicken after and put it back in the soup and blend half of it, put it back together and I'll have a nice creamy chicken soup. So I'm going to hit pressure on this machine. You just keep hitting it. It has three choices and um, they're all presets and this was the closest to 25 minutes. So now I've got it set for 25 minutes and it's going to go ahead and cook it and keep it warm and I'm able to go to work and not worry about it at all. It's going to totally take care of itself. Make sure the top is sealed, push back, otherwise the front the steam will keep coming out. You got to push it back. We're locked, we're loaded, we're ready to go. Well, I'm off to work now while it cooks, but I just wanted to mention that uh, you don't have to have an Instapot to make this type of chicken soup. You just go ahead and do everything the same in a regular pot, fill to cover the chicken with water, and then just boil until the chicken's done. It's just the Instapot makes it easier, quicker, and uh, hands off. And the pressure cooking of the Instapot seals in the juices a little stronger. So you could also use a traditional pressure cooker. So um, just keep that in mind. What makes this soup so great and such a healing soup is that you're cooking a whole chicken inside with tons of veggies and you're using things such as bone broth to supplement its healing properties. So keep that in mind. Okay guys, we're ready to open up. It's been 43 minutes I'm warm and we wanted it to be 30. So it doesn't matter if it's a few extra minutes on the Instapot. Open it up, it should open easily. And then here's your chicken. We're gonna pull off the chicken and we're gonna pull off the meat, but be careful because the chicken is uh, gonna fall apart on you. So let's see how this goes, guys. So get this sucker out. See, it's gonna fall apart. So be careful. And let it fall apart. There. Okay, so I'm going to take all the skin and all the meat, throw away the skin, and pull off all the meat, keep the carcass for making some bone broth, and then this part, I will take half of it and put it in the blender. And then I'll pour it back in here. And then I'll put all of the pulled off meat into this and our soup will be done. So I like to use my Vitamix. It does an amazing job. So I'm gonna pull out uh, half of this and we're gonna blend it and I'm gonna pour it back in. You'll get to see how cool it looks half this out and uh, what I find is that um, blended meat does not taste good so I won't put the meat in the blender I keep I do all the veggie and the broth in the blender and um, I put in the chicken afterwards blended up meat is I don't know not great okay so that's about half and we'll stick it in the blender here the Vitamix is really nice because you can start on low it slowly, slowly, slowly. Don't take much. That's about it. Stick this back in the soup, and you have yourself a nice, creamy chicken soup without having to have added any dairy. Look at that. Look how beautiful and creamy that soup is now. So next will come all the chicken pieces off of this. And um, I may thicken it by adding more veggies if I like, 
or you can even add a little cornstarch in a small bit of the water. That will create more thick soup. There's different things you can do at this stage, but basically it's done. Um, I just remembered I have a whole bunch of mushrooms, so I'll probably saute those on the side and add those in too. So there you go, guys. Simple, easy, nutritious chicken soup made from whole chicken. Hi everybody, I'm back from work and I'm uh, ready to uh, go back at my soup. And since I'm making this for two friends that are not feeling well, I really want to make uh, the soup uh, go a little bit further. So here is my, um, what we made, which was, uh, I think it's a six quart pot. So it looks like I have about three, three quarts of soup. But to me, this is a little too thin. I like my soups to eat like a meal, like Mr. Wapner says. And um, it's not quite uh, mealy enough for me. It's just a little too thin. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I have a whole bunch of mushrooms uh, in the fridge. And so I've chopped up the mushrooms. We're gonna uh, saute those again in some garlic and ginger I've got prepared here. And then um, I'm gonna add a little more carrot, a little more um, celery. And then I also have a few potatoes here that were already pre-cooked with a little bit of cooked carrot. And then this is the chicken that I still have to get all the meat off of and put that in there. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and saute the mushrooms here. And then I'm gonna get a big soup pot and add it all together in a bigger soup pot than this. And this is not really made for the stove. So off we go. So here we go, a little bit of olive oil again. And I've got it on about medium heat and I'm going to throw in my ginger and my garlic. Because in my opinion, you can never have too much of either one, pretty much. They're both so very healing and it just gives a nice taste and nice healing properties to your soup. So as you can see, I mentioned I freeze these. I, I grind them all fresh and then I freeze them. So this ginger is a little bit like a ball. So saute that on some medium heat. And once it's a little bit browned, I'm gonna add my mushrooms. Then I'm gonna let the mushrooms get nice and finished. And then I'll add some more um, carrot and celery. And that way the carrots and the celery will be a little bit fresher. So that allows for nice reheating of the soup when you have uh, vegetables that are not that are more al dente and it keeps the soup fresher when you have to reheat it up okay so it's just a little bit brown and then we're gonna add our mushrooms now I've got a lot of mushrooms but they'll cook down so nicely and mushrooms go great with chicken Like it needs just a little bit more oil. It's quite dry. Just a little bit. And if it stays too dry, then sometimes I put a little lid on and then most vegetables will sweat enough to get um, a little extra water in the pan so it doesn't burn. Which I might do just to get this started. So I'll go ahead and put a cover on it. I'll let that cook for a minute or two with the cover and it will sweat some nice water so I won't have sticking. Okay, let's take a peek at what's going on here. So we've got some nice water developing like I was looking for. And now I don't really want watery mushrooms so I'm gonna take the lid off and let them dry up now that we have enough that we're not burning. And I wanna show you how I um, handle the chicken. So here's my carcass here. And I like to have three bowls. One is my throwaway bowl. This is all the fat and skin, things that we don't need. We don't need all that extra fat. This is my bones and a little bit of uh, fat and gristle in there just to make the bone broth. This will, this I'll make into bone broth later. And then here's my shreds of fresh chicken in another bowl. So it does take a little effort to clean the carcass and separate out so you can use everything. So it's looking real good. 
It has a nice uh, enough water in there to keep the pan from sticking. And now I'm going to saute it still on medium, maybe a little medium high, to get them to dry up now. And they'll get smaller and nice and delicious, ready for the soup. So at this point I'm going to add a little of my secret weapon, some of the hickory salt. And I have another secret weapon from my mother-in-law, which is some Trader Joe's mushroom sauce. And this stuff is really great. It actually makes mushrooms taste even more mushroomy, as you can imagine. So I'm going to throw some of that, some of my mushroom umami from Trader Joe's into my mushrooms. And I like to add a lot of spice. I like to have lots of flavor. And I'm going to add a little of my hickory salt also to the mushrooms. Again, the theory goes is that the more you cook things with the spice while you're cooking them, um, retains flavor once it's in all that broth of a soup. So I like to keep adding seasoning to my veggies as we go along so the veggies really get a distinct delicious taste on their own that survives into the soup. Okay, it's looking good, nice and reduced down. You can see the mushrooms are shrinking and they have a nice dark color. I'm going to throw in a little more basil. And shortly I'm going to throw in the carrots and the carrots will get the nice mushroomy taste. I want them to reduce down just a little bit more before I do that. Okay, so again, if it sticks a little bit, you can deglaze with a little bit of wine. And you just stick a tiny bit of wine in there, not very much, and it allows the sticky parts to pull up off the bottom. They call that deglazing. So that's looking real good now. So now I'm going to throw in my uncooked carrots into the mushrooms so they get that nice flavor. You want them to pick up the mushroomy flavor. So we stir, stir, stir to coat, coat those carrots with that nice mushroomy flavor. And again, just to cook them down a little bit and have their own natural water, I'm just going to cover it for a moment. That will cook the carrots a little more uh, quickly and get them to sort of an al, al dente state. And then I'll add, um, I'm going to add my celery and eventually I will add the cooked potatoes. But that will be at the end. And again, I'm always stirring all the veggies together with seasoning so that they maintain a nice flavor in the soup. Okay, my carrots are looking real good. They're looking cooked enough, nice and soft. Well, al dente still. And not too much sticking in the pan. So now I'm gonna throw in my celery. Stir that around for some flavor. And after a moment, I'll add the rest of the cooked potatoes. I transferred my soup, the, what I have of the soup broth, into my really large uh, soup making pot because I really want to make a big batch of this for my friends. So what I'm going to do is use that second um, packet of chicken broth that we weren't able to fit in the Instapot earlier and I'm going to put it in the big pot and that will make more broth and as you can see I have lots of chicken that's out of just one uh, one chicken, whole chicken, lots and lots of chicken here's my bones to make bone broth later and uh, we're going to have a nice pot of soup here shortly 
right, this is looking um, like the celery has been cooked enough. It's still going to be quite crunchy in there, but uh, we'll be boiling it in the soup later. So I'm going to put in my cooked potatoes and carrots. One of the recipients can't have many carbs, so we're just going to put in a few potatoes. Chicken soup is, and you're not if you're not adding a rice or a pasta, it's great to add potatoes as your starch. Delicious addition. So that's looking really good. So I've got this chicken now left here, and it's making me wonder if I also want to saute that. But I haven't decided yet. I could put it in raw like this, or I might just do more of a saute like I just did with the veggies. And uh, we're just going to decide that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and add the veggies now to the broth. So it's nice and chunky now. I think I will still throw a little bit of this in the blender to really get that mushroom throughout the broth. And it will give it more of an even creamier taste. And I think I might go ahead and saute that chicken as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop out some of this to get back in the blender to give us that nice, special, creamy, consistency that only comes with using a blender. So here we go, we're adding the blended veggies. And you should see how quickly it changes to a nice, creamy soup. See that? It adds it nice, thick. Look how nice and thick that soup's starting to be. And there's lots of chunks in there still. So we're starting to have our soup that eats like a meal. Okay, I'm gonna use the same pan and I am gonna saute up the chicken a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little more olive oil. And I'm just gonna cook up the chicken with a little bit of spice probably just salt and pepper. If I was making it for myself, I might add a little more ginger and garlic, but I'm not sure everybody loves ginger and garlic as much as I do. So I'm going to go ahead and shred my chicken and saute it with some salt and pepper. There's a lot of chicken on a whole chicken. This soup's gonna be delicious. So again, we're just trying to give it some flavor. So it holds its own in the soup. More of my hickory salt. some nice fresh ground pepper. I'm going to go a little hog wild and add a little butter instead of olive oil. I'm going to add a little butter which gives another flavor profile to everything. And I'm just going to sear in this salt and pepper and make the chicken a little bit sauteed. So as you can see I follow recipes exactly and know exactly what I'm doing at every point in time. Ha ha ha. Only kidding. So this is how I make a soup. I just keep thinking of what would be the next step? What can make it so delicious? So I'm thinking butter on chicken.
What's wrong with that? So now my soup is boiling over here. And uh, I think I'm ready to add more of the chicken broth so that we make this soup go further. I usually use only organic ingredients, but a friend of mine gave me this chicken broth, so I'm gonna use it. So that's looking good. Adding that broth hasn't taken down the nice chunkiness of it, and it should still have a nice flavor. And we're gonna make sure the flavor is good by sauteing the chicken. And I think once the chicken sauteed and gets some nice flavor inside it, I'll put it in the bone broth, I mean in the soup, and uh, we should be close to done here. All right, this chicken is turning out really good. I think I might want to deglaze de the pan just a little bit more, just to add, again, a little white wine in there. All the alcohol gets burned off, so no worries there. It sure is starting to look good. So I like to taste it along the way, make sure it's doing good. Mm. That's really nice. Simple salt and pepper and really make things shine. Okay, this is getting close to done. We can see it's starting to brown a little bit on the edges. We don't really want that. So we got to finish this up and I'm just going to throw a little bit more basil in there. Why not? It's from my garden. And speaking of the garden, I think I might go get a few extra greens to make this soup a really nice healing soup with greens in it. So I'm going to run down to the garden now and get a few more greens and I might saute those up too. But for now, we're going to go ahead and stick the chicken into the big pot and have it come together. So we're ready for that. Okay, isn't this looking good? So I think all we need to do now is um, go get some greens from the garden. And let's make this a beautiful chicken soup full of greens. So here we are in the garden at night. And I'm going to pick some of this kale. This is some curly kale. And I've got some dinosaur kale. I've got some collard greens. I've got some Swiss chard. Oh no, beet greens, I think these are. I've got some bok choy. And more collard greens. So we're gonna have a mixture of some of these beautiful garden veggies in our soup. So here we go, we got some amazing garden veggies. Look at this huge bok choy and the curly kale, some fresh scallions and uh, collard greens and they're massive. This is Mark's garden veggies. He's an amazing gardener. Okay, I've got my greens. I've got curly kale, collard greens, beet greens and uh, dinosaur kale and bok choy in here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and saute them again in a little bit of ginger and garlic because that's the way I like it. Okay, we got the pan warmed up. A little more olive oil. Going to get that a little bit warmed up. Then we're going to add our greens. You can add the ginger and garlic in the oil, but uh, I did learn from someone that you put the greens in first and then you put the ginger and garlic over it and cover it. So I think I'm going to do that so that uh, we get a little different flavor profile with the ginger and garlic being um, put in with the greens rather than sauteed in the oil. It changes it a little bit. So we're going to that's nice and warm. Stick it 
stick the greens in. And I'm going to pop this ginger. Like I said, it's frozen, so it's kind of a ball. Stick that there. Stick this here and put the cover back on. Let that simmer a minute. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Stir this up a little bit. We want them to wilt just a little bit. Again, I'm trying to get flavor in here before I stick it into the broth. So I've got to wait for that ginger to melt down a little bit since it's been frozen and the garlic. And you can see it's reducing down already significantly. I could have used two or three times as much greens. And just a little bit of salt in there to make them wilt down a little bit longer. And throw in a little pepper. Salt and pepper. Very nice, simple spices. Of course, I use the hickory salt, but even plain salt is going to be delicious. Now, I stay away from regular table salt, and I always use sea salt, because although they're called the same name, they are completely different things. And table salt is a chemical that's created in a lab, and sea salt is made by God. So, I prefer the sea salt. So that looks really nice and good, because it's going to cook more in the soup. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that in the soup now. Let's see if you can see what's going on here. So here we go. Look at that. A nice healing soup for our two friends that are not feeling so well. Finally, I'm just going to add some scallions from the garden and I'm going to put those in pretty raw. And I think our soup is done. I'm going to dish it out and I'm going to have a little for myself. Aloha! Don't be afraid to make your own healing soup. Just follow your intuition and saute all the ingredients along the way. And you'll have a terrific soup. Aloha. I served mine with a little fresh avocado and a little Parmesan cheese. Bon appetit. Okay guys, let's be real. When you cook uh, from scratch, you make a mess. So, you just better get used to dishes and uh, it's just uh, the name of the game. It's a ridiculous amount of dishes. But uh, I feel like cooking a uh, soup like this is uh, the greatest choice you can do for your health and for a friend's health. And it uh, there's nothing like it. They taste amazing and they feel the love and it turns out way more incredible than anything you can even buy anywhere and suddenly home cooked food is the best food you can have. So I call myself the reluctant chef because I never wanted to do all this work and who does but in the end if it makes you feel so much better and it helps your friends heal from really hard times then why not Give it a try and put in a little effort and make a healing soup. And uh, this all started because I got very, very sick when I first moved to Maui and I was massaging a lot of tourists coming in that had different flus from different areas and I got quite sick and I was given antibiotics prescription by the doctor 
And two weeks later, I got very, very sick again and was given antibiotics prescription by the doctor. And two weeks later, I got sick again. And I said, I'm not going back to take those things that make me feel sick. And it wasn't working for me. And so I had heard that chicken, whole chicken soup was the so-called uh, Jewish penicillin. <laughs> Sorry if that's offensive to anyone, but I loved the concept. And so I went for it and I made this kind of soup for myself and I ate it every day for a month. That's all I ate and I rested as much as I could. I rested and I let myself sleep and I ate this and only this. And it built back my immune system to such a degree that I don't believe I was sick <clears throat> once in 10 years. And uh, since that time, which was about 15 years ago, I was sick once that I remember. I was quite sick and uh, laid up in bed. But again, this is all I wanted to eat. So give it a try. It's not that hard. You don't have to get as elaborate as I have. But uh, this, is, uh, this is healing, folks. This is building immunity, and this is what we need. And this is building community and... Uh, Let's eat some good soup, okay? Aloha from Maui. Love you guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. Well, I'm really glad I chose to try and make this go a little further. So I've ended up with two soups per friend and actually a little extra for us, which is unusual. Usually I give it all away, so Mark will be really happy to hear that there's some healing soup left for us to enjoy. And there you go. There's a lot of dishes to do, but happiness and joy in my heart for having made such a wonderful healing food for my friends who are struggling. So aloha everybody, be well, and uh, boost that immune system with good food. One last thing guys, um, make sure that you stir the soups and leave them out so that they cool before you put them in the refrigerator. If uh, you put them in hot, they create condensation on the lids and that's a breeding ground for bacteria. So you wanna make sure that you lay out your soups and stir them and get them to be quite cool before you put them in the fridge. So that's my last tip for the day on Shayla's TV healing soup. <laughs> Only kidding. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found something of interest and might try to make yourself some healing soup.